Good morning, boys and girls. We have an exciting lesson for this week. On both Tuesday and Thursday, we are going to be studying red worms. And it's pretty exciting. And I wish you were here so that I could let you play with them. But I'm gonna play with them and show you. And here's a little perk. Next year, when the kindergartners are studying earthworms and all these critters, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to handle them then. Since this is a different year and you can't do it, I'm gonna make sure that next year you will have an opportunity to touch them and learn some things hands-on. Um, earthworms, um, red worms are a kind of an earthworm and we're gonna be studying both the red worms and the earthworms. We're gonna to get to the earthworms next week, but today we're going to learn about red worms and their environment. And this is a home for red worms. I have some potting soil in here. I added enough water to make the soil nice and moist because worms need moisture so that they can wiggle through the dirt. They also are decomposers. Now decomposers are creatures that help break down the organic material. And in our animals two by two unit, we're gonna study several different kinds of decomposers. The red wigglers are called red wigglers because they're little and they're red and they wiggle a lot. Um, we're going to study how they can help us and they're the preferred worm for compost heaps. So you know that we have our compost heaps at Trinity. Some of our parents have been gracious and have brought some compost through the remainder of the semester. And the compost is really looking good. And when we add these wigglers, it's gonna be even better. So are y'all ready to see an up close introduction? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to dig through the dirt here it is. I'm going to, and I have a glass of water because in order to play with him and kind of observe him, I need him to be clean and that dirt needs to be off of him. So I'm gonna use my little spoon and I'm going to dig in here. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm gonna try and show you a big handful. Oh my goodness gracious, looky there. Um, let me see if I can hold it so you can see it. There's a bunch of red wigglers right here. Oops, I don't wanna spill dirt on my, there's one sticking his head out right there. He's kind of wiggling around. I don't know if you can see him, see him turning around. There's, a, we ordered a bag online and it said there were 250 in the bag. And I'm just gonna believe them because I don't think I could count them. Well, let me see if I can get one that has a little bit longer so you can see them. There's one that's a little bit longer. Some of these little worms. Goodness me. There's so many here. Oh, here's one that's a good size. The red wigglers are a little bitty. Oh, there's one. There's a good one. You see him? Can y'all see him? He's wiggling around. He lives up to his name. He is wiggling and he is red. And there's another one in here that I'm gonna put back in because he wasn't quite ready to play. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I've got him in the water. There's been a lot of soil that came off. And, boy, I'm so good at this. Let's see. There you are, little wiggler. And they kind of like to move around. Okay, you see he's coming out of the glass. There he is. Can you see him? Here's our little friend. He's not very big, he looks big. See, the more I take him away, the smaller he looks. He really is not very big. Let me see if you can compare him to my hand. And, oops, let's see. Can you see how little he is? Oh, goodness gracious. Miss Hooper, he's kind of slippery. Well, let's see. Okay, there he is. And he has a, a mouth at the front, the more pointed end is where his mouth is. And this is his, what they call the posterior. Um, they have a little band in the middle of their belly called a clitellum. 
And that's where they have their eggs when they're gonna have babies. That's where the, the eggs come from. The little wiggler is, he's pretty thin. Now next week when we get to learning about earthworms, I'm gonna show you an earthworm next to a red wiggler and you will get to see how they compare. Now I think that people who go fishing, oh goodness, he seems to like my computer. People who go fishing use these as their bait for the fish. This little fella really does like to wiggle around. So here he is, can you see him? There are so many red wigglers in this container, you just won't believe it. They've been in the mail for several days and they're just, they just got out of their mailing container. But look how he moves along. Can you see how he's ooching along? They don't have feet. Let me tell you some facts about red worms. They don't have feet, and you can see that's his head. They don't have feet, so they move. They have some little bristles on them called setae, and those bristles let them hold on to the ground. And can you see how he's moving around? He's really a busy little fella. Uh, they have segmented bodies, and on the red wiggler worms, um, they don't have eyes, so they can't see. They don't have lungs. They, can't, they, they breathe through their skin. Um, there's oxygen in the soil and they soak it in through their skin, which is an interesting fact about the earthworms. Can you see my little friend? He is just wanting to move around. I just wish you were here so you could hold one and see how well they move. And we could even have a worm race. Wouldn't that be fun? So my little friend is very tiny. Here is a spoon. Look how skinny he is next to the handle of this plastic spoon. Uh, I'm going to put him up now so we can talk a little bit about red worms. Goodbye, friend. We'll see you another time. And the good news is he's got, they're all going to get to go to the compost heap when we're through studying them. And when y'all come back to school, we will go visit the compost uh, and we will dig it up and let you see all the worms in there and the way they decompose. Decomposers are important because they help break down the organic material in our soil. I want you to know some facts about uh, worms. Boss has these points listed out. You need to remember that a worm is an animal. They need water, food, air, and some kind of a space to live in or a shelter. And their space is the dirt. And they move by inching, their, se their segments let them inch and move forward, and that's how they move. Plus the bristles called the setae kind of help them grip the ground as they move through. They help them out a lot. Uh, you really can't see the bristles, they're teeny tiny, but they are a, an important um, part of the structure of the worm. If you've ever seen a picture of a bird that grabbed a worm in the dirt, and they're pulling, 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 and that worm's not letting go of the dirt, the reason it's not letting go is it has those bristles or the setae that let them grip the ground. And some of, sometimes the worms win, sometimes the birds win. Um, the clitellum is in the middle. It kind of looks like a saddle. You can see it better on the earthworm than you can on the red worm. And that's where the eggs are. And it's found in the middle of the mature adult worms. Uh, I want you to look, I've got a really, I've got several really cool books on earthworms. This one is, uh, it's got real pictures, photographs, and it's called Earthworms by Claire Llewellyn. Now you can look at the structure of the earthworm and they will be very much the same as the red worm. So if you're looking at it, the fatter ones are the earthworms. Okay, this is the chart right here that I want you to look at. And this, this thick band in the middle is called the clitellum, and that is where the, the eggs are. Okay, and this right here is what we call the posterior of the earthworm. And up here is the head, and that's where the mouth is. But you can look closely and you will not discover eyes because they don't have eyes. But they are very adept at getting around in the soil using their adaptations. Uh, uh, worms do not have a skeleton. 
They, they are an invertebrate. Remember when we were studied bees, they were also invertebrates. But worms are not considered an insect because they don't have legs and they don't have a three-part body. They are in a different category. So um, it's a category called the annelids. And they're pretty magnificent creatures and they are friends to us. If you see an earthworm, you thank them for the good job they're doing in the garden. So I've got another page I would like to share with you. And let's see. This is a close up picture of the clitellum. You see that little fat band right in the middle? When we get to earthworms, they're very easy to see. They're a little bit harder in the, on the red worms. But red worms are teeny tiny and they are great decomposers. Um, very important things that I would like for you to uh, explore. And today, you've got a little page that looks like this. And they've drawn part of the earthworm. You have to draw the other half. And there's the clitellum. And I believe that this is the mouth. So you're going to be drawing the posterior. The posterior is a little bit bigger than the front of the red worm. And um, I want you to write down here a fact that you have learned about worms. This one says a worm, but we're today talking about red worms, but both earthworms and red worms have the same structure. And you can write some facts down here. I will make sure that you've got the, three, the anatomy parts uh, in the instructions if you need to look at the words to use, okay? So, um, boys and girls, today is gonna be a really fun day. You've got one more page to do this week, and you can do it all today, or you can save one for Thursday. This is a jar. And it would be kind of like what Mrs. Hooper showed you with the, the earthworm box. I want you to draw the level of the dirt here. And you can draw some green leaves on top because that's what they like to eat. And they will decompose those green leaves. And then you can draw some of them making their little tunnels underground or the burrows, whatever you want to call them. And, and um, you can describe, it says, what do red worms need to live? And remember, we just talked about it. They need air, they need water, they need food, and they need space. So today, we're working with red worms, and um, one day's assignment is to complete the chart of the red worm and label it with clitellum, head, and posterior. Posterior is another word for their back end. And the other assignment is draw a terrarium for worms and show how they live underground and then put some green leaves on top. I put spinach on top because that's something that's very good and they will decompose that pretty quickly. And you can write down here what the, what the worm needs to live. And that is your assignment. Plus, I have some videos that I have on my video links that I want you to watch. They are very interesting videos, and I think you'll learn some interesting things from watching those. So y'all have a good week. And my other assignment is go outside and see if you can see any worms. Worms come out when it rains on the sidewalk. A lot of times, if you have worms in your yard, after a rain, you'll see them come out because they have to have moisture to move. And that's probably their look, them looking for new homes. And I think some of the videos you're going to watch are going to show that. They're not very long videos, but I think you're really going to enjoy them. Uh, boys and girls, y'all are doing a super job. I love seeing your pictures. I love seeing your smiles. That makes me happy. Some of you are doing a fabulous job of reading your assignments to me. Boy, y'all have really grown this year. I'm so proud of all of you, and I'm proud of the parents. You parents are really doing a good job of being a teacher and a parent, and um, we're proud of you, and we're going to really have fun learning this year. 
So thank you for all you're doing and I can't wait to see your assignments. Bye.